In this video, we're going to take a look at batch raw processing using Camera Raw. Now, as you can see, I'm currently in Adobe Bridge, and what I'd like to do first is select multiple images that I'd like to open and edit in Camera Raw. Now, there are a couple of ways of going about doing this. You can either first hold down the Shift key and use the uh, keyboard arrows to actually select your images and you can select them in rows of multiple images if you wanted to. Uh, but in this particular example, I only want to select some particular images. So I'm going to hold down the command key on a Mac or the, the actual control key on a PC and select the individual files that I actually want to open up. Now, once I've selected them, you want to right click on one of the selected files and you want to go to open in camera raw click on that and the first thing you'll notice is that all the images that you've selected now display in the left hand column as thumbnails so as you can see you can flick through all those different images and edit them individually now to start off with if you if you look in the bottom right hand corner here of the large image you'll notice that there's an exclamation mark now this is simply stating that um, this file has previously been edited in a older version of Camera Raw and it's saying that it would like to actually update the XMP file data to the new process of Camera Raw 6.5 which I'm currently using. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all and then I'm going to go and click on that. Now what you'll notice is all of them have just updated so none of them have that exclamation mark there anymore. Now if you were to make adjustments to one image, you could then apply those adjustments to multiple images. So for example, if I wanted to say add, let's say we add 100 uh, clarity to this image. Now say I would like to actually add all the adjustments that I've made to this image to another image or to multiple images for that matter. What you'd need to do is you need to go across and either select an image holding down the command or control once again uh, as to which images you actually want to apply those settings to. Now the thing to pay particular attention to is the first image that you edit must remain selected. You then must go and select all the other images that you actually want to apply those changes to. So in this particular case I could have just gone uh, single like that and then go and select all or you can hold down that one once again and just go and select say two images that you want it applied to. So let's do it just to these two images. Now obviously these changes are going to have a dramatic impact on these two particular images themselves but let's just do it to, to actually show you how this works. So if we click on synchronize you'll notice that you'll get a complete synchronized panel that will show up and it'll allow you to choose which particular um, adjustments and features in Camera Raw that you actually want to apply those same settings to those other two images. So in this particular example, if I were to just select Clarity, then only Clarity would change, but I could also select uh, every other feature that actually happens to be on this list. But let's just leave it to Clarity. That will actually keep some of the other settings looking relatively okay. So now I click OK and what you'll notice now is if I go to these two images you'll notice clarity here has updated to 100 and we go to this one and that has also updated to 100. So that's a real neat feature of Camera Raw, being able to edit multiple images um, especially if they've been shot with the same settings it really makes things quite uh, quite easy for you, especially say for example if you've shot a wedding, that it makes it really easy for you to go through, you know, say 50 frames and actually go that one's going to be very similar to that one and make the same adjustments and then then once you've made the overall adjustments to a whole batch of images you can then go back and slightly make tweaks to each as you go through them all. Now once you've made your changes to your images you have the option to export your files. Now, for example, you can click on Save All and then go to Save Images. 
This now gives you several different options for saving those files that you've edited. Now in this particular example, you could actually take your existing raw files and actually save them as DNG files. Now in this particular case, I have actually saved them already as DNG files, so they're already in that correct format uh, that I personally happen to prefer using. Um, but if you were in your camera's raw format and you wanted to convert it over to a DNG format just to make sure to combine your raw file with your XMP data so that you only had one file to, to actually manage and keep an eye on and make sure they were together, then you could do that through this particular uh, option panel. Now what it allows you to do is save in a new location or the same location where those files are. So potentially when I do this, I create a new folder and I call it a particular name, uh, say for instance uh, JPEGs, if I wanted to create JPEGs that were supposed to go off to printing, you could do that. Uh, you can also then change the file naming conventions. So in this particular example, it will actually default to the document name, but you can also add on additional extensions. So if you wanted to add on, uh, say for example, if you're a wedding photographer and you wanted to add on the client's last name, uh, maybe a, a location or a time of day or uh, something along those lines, you could actually add it into here and it would actually add that on to the file name uh, when it actually saves those files. And you do have a range of other options that you can also use also, such as um, you've got here, you can actually create some di uh, digit serial numbers, you can create serial letters, uh, dates that you can add in here as well. So it gives you a couple of different options that you can also use. From there, you can have you can choose a particular file extension. So instead of DNG, because these are already DNG, say I wanted to actually print these files and I wanted to save them as uh, JPEGs, I could select JPEG as being the output file format. Uh, and then from there, you can choose a uh, the actual quality of the JPEG, whether you want it to be a high compression or a maximum compression or even a low compression. You can choose all that information there. You've and you've also got those options available to you, or similar options available to you using TIFF format. We can choose a uh, zip compression, and you've also can actually choose to save them as PSD files. Um, and that also has one option available to you, which is preserve crop pixels. So that's how you basically export and save your files as new file formats with new file naming conventions. Um, so that can be extremely useful and it essentially cuts out Photoshop because you, you don't necessarily need to always go into Photoshop if you don't want to. If you can get you know, files that look really fantastic in camera raw, you don't have to go back into Photoshop. You can save them straight out uh, into an output format if you wanted to. Um, you could even, if you wanted to, say, if you save them out in, say, Adobe uh, RGB, which is the particular color working space you're using, and then you wanted to convert them to an output color profile, which would be, say, if you were sending them off to a photographic lab and they had a particular output profile, you could actually convert all those images that you saved as JPEGs in that folder as Adobe RGB to the new output um, to the new output color working space that may be a particular paper type or a particular printing machine, you could actually convert that entire folder without actually having to open them all up in Photoshop. You could create an action, for example, and there are a couple of other different um, tools that you could use just to automatically convert that folder over for you so you don't actually have to do any work. So there are several different options available to you for your workflow and actually saving time in the long run itself. Now, along with this option, you can also choose, if you're a fan of DNG, instead of converting them to DNG through Camera Raw to begin with, I mean, yeah, to begin with, you can actually download Adobe's DNG converter for free off their website. They have a Windows and a um, and a Mac version of it that you could actually utilize. Um, so for example, I'm just going to go and open up mine. And as you can see here, it's a totally free DNG converter. And all you need to do is select the folder that your raw files are in, then select 
um, save in same location or select save in new location then choose to select folder say for example if you want to save a new location where that folder is actually located then you can also choose some of the different naming conventions that we were discussing previously and then also the actual uh, preferences that are listed here so you can change the actual compatibility with uh, particular types of camera raw particularly versions of camera raw I should say so in this example it defaults to camera raw 5.4 or later uh, you can also then choose the preview size of your actual JPEG preview which I prefer to leave on medium size to keep the file size um, small and and um, in a later on video when you actually view uh, camera raw preferences you can also set that in the preferences also and you can also choose here to set whether you actually want to embed the original raw file in your DNG. Now that does create a larger uh, DNG file, but it does give you the option of having that original file contained within your DNG file. Um, so it's entirely up to you, but there are a couple of different options that you can choose from in uh, the Adobe's Digital Negative Converter. Uh, once you've done that, you basically want to um, extract or oh, convert I should say you actually want to go and convert those files by clicking on the convert button to that new destination that you've actually gone and selected so once again that's entirely free and you can download that the best thing to do is just go to Google type in Adobe's um, DNG converter and either either add to that um, for PC or, or Mac and one of the first couple of links that will pop up will be Adobe's actual link um, to that location on their website with the actual download information for that application and this basically just shortens your time so this enables you to have your files automatically converted to DNG especially if your camera doesn't do that uh, prior to going into Camera Raw um, and actually start editing your photos. So that is also quite neat. Now another thing I'd like to point out in Camera Raw itself is if you hold down the Alt key on a PC or the Option key, you'll notice down the bottom here that the actual menus change or the buttons change, I should say. So for example, at the moment I've got Open Objects and that's open objects because it's normally um, open images but I've got ob smart objects selected in um, this menu here which we'll discuss in a future video um, but you can notice here that it goes reset so I can actually reset all the changes that I've made to my image if I'm unhappy with them just by clicking on that now I only made one change to this image so as you can see the clarity's just dropped off but if I was to make a whole bunch of changes that are quite you know hideous and terrible you could then hold down your alt or your option key on your Mac and hit reset and then it resets all those values once again so that's quite neat as well you can also choose instead of opening up this individual file by itself you can open up copies of that file and so that's just another option that's available to you um, by holding down the Alt and Option key in Camera Raw.